life is cruelty. What's up guys, I hope you are doing well and staying safe. So Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics came out this past Friday. I wasn't really planning on doing any sort of follow-up video on Clubhouse Games, but I did receive a lot of requests from you guys and from my friends to to kind of give sort of my first impressions of the game and how I think it kind of stacks up with the original, which makes sense given my deep dive video on it. That being said, if you haven't already seen my original Clubhouse Games video, I do recommend taking a look at that before watching this one because this one's kind of built on the presupposition that you already know about the original Clubhouse Games, what Clubhouse Games is, and sort of my, my thoughts and feelings about it. Um, this is going to be a bit of a different video from what I normally do. Normally, for my, my longer form videos, I, I do a lot more research and script writing and just a lot more planning out the editing. This is just going to be kind of a stream of conscious, my just initial first impressions and thoughts about the game in general. The game is a lot of fun. I've been playing it. I got my game copy a little bit late. I did get it on launch day, but I didn't get it until a little bit later. I, it, my copy came through the mail, and so I've, I've spent the past couple days just playing a lot of it. I've been playing a lot of President. I've been playing that online a lot. I've been playing a lot of the games that I normally would have played on the original, oddly enough. With the exception of Mancala, Mancala is a game that I had never really played before. My sister always tried to get me to play when we were younger, and like, I just never really learned how to play it. It never made sense to me when I was that young. This game makes it way, way easier to learn. I picked it up pretty quickly, and honestly, it's becoming one of my most played games in Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. It's a lot of fun. I'm playing a lot of Mancala, a lot of billiards, a lot of the six ball puzzle. There's just, there is a lot of variety to the games here. I, I have a theory that ND Cube has like a very professional graphic designer working uh, in their studio. All of their games just always have such a clean, beautiful UI. Uh, the graphics in this are very realistic. Everything looks almost photorealistic and just like basically exactly how you would imagine it to. The game also has all these nice little animated touches. I really like when you select a game, how there's these cute little like cartoony animations for each of the game board pieces. That's a nice little charming touch. Something else I'd also notice is that in the game, last card, they have like the original hands from the box art from Clubhouse Games on the back of the cards. I thought that was a really nice little homage to the original. Something that I've seen a lot of people complain about is they feel like the introduction videos are cringy and when they make you watch it like every single time before you select a game, I mean you can skip it, but when you see it pop up so often I guess I can see how it would be cringy. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. I think they're not charming per se, but they definitely make me laugh. I think they're funny. Um, I guess my sense of humor is like weirdly out of whack from everybody else's, but I, I, I watch them the first time that I play a game and never again after that, but I, I don't find them as cringy as other people do. Um, I think they serve their purpose. They give you a quick introduction to the game. I think that's fine. The music in the game is serviceable. It's fine. In my opinion, it just doesn't hold a candle to the original. I really love like the jazzy and the big band music from the original. It's something that I talked about a lot in my video. It just established such a mood and sophisticated feeling to the game. And the music in Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics on Switch kind of matches the minimalism of the game's graphics. It's, it's, un it's unobtrusive, it's unoffensive. It's just not very memorable either. I've been playing a bit of the online multiplayer. I've been playing a lot of President online. I love playing President. And do you remember one of the things I said in my original video is that we didn't really have Wi-Fi growing up. So I never really played the original Clubhouse games online, but I've been playing a lot more of the online multiplayer now. But the way the multiplayer works is that you can actually select three different games to wait on at a time, which makes the wait times, at least in my experience, very quick because you're searching for three different games, basically in three different lobbies, it searches and finds something to match you with pretty quickly. Um, I think that alleviates a lot of the annoyances that you have with traditional games. Like if no one's playing a game online, then it's impossible to find a match. And when you have a game that has, you know, 51 different games in it, you'd think that it'd be really hard to find a match for those games. But since you can kind of select from three, 
um, you have a wider pool of getting a, a matchup, which I think works really, really well. Beyond that, the game does exactly what it sets out to be. The game is a compilation of board games and card games and toy games, and it's it works great. You can play it on your TV, you can play it on the go. It's fine. The game is fine on its own. In a world where the original Clubhouse games didn't exist, the game would be just fine. The problem is this game bears the name Clubhouse Games and implies that it is a sequel to the original Clubhouse Games. And because of that, you would think that it would take a lot more influence from the original Clubhouse Games, but for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to be the case. So, the list of games is pretty extensive in Clubhouse Games, 51 More by Classics. The games that are available, there's a large variety. I like that they have a lot of different types of action games, card games, board games. They don't really focus too much on one specific area. There is nice variety. At the same time though, there are lots of notable omissions from the original that I'm not really quite sure why they didn't make it back into this version. For example, Grid Attack, that's like a weird knockoff version of Battleship. Uh, Rummy, which is one of my favorite card games from the original. I Doubt It, which is one of my all-time favorite card games, which was great on the original Clubhouse games. For some reason, doesn't make it back. Balance is a great game. Um, and even Soda Shake. Soda Shake, I gave a, a pretty hard time in my original video just because it is a really weird game to have. But considering, considering how much focus um, that Clubhouse games puts into like HD rumble and like motion controls for certain games, I feel like bringing back soda shake would have been perfect for this game like using the hd rumble to actually make it feel like there's like fizz and compression building up inside of the the, the joy con i think would have been a really great idea i don't think it would have been a very good game but i think it would have been a really great tech demo there's also this weird lack of variety in your control options maybe lack of variety isn't necessarily the right terminology the game has lots of different ways for controlling different games but the fact that all the different methods are not available per each each game just seems really weird. So some games you can control with the buttons, some games you can control with the touch screen, some games you can control with motion controls, but it's really kind of hit or miss about which games will utilize which controls. And I feel like the game would have been a lot stronger overall if all three versions were implemented in some way. And I think having that accessibility of having all the different types of controls in each game would make it more accessible because there's been a lot of games where I've played that like I just for whatever reason I expect there to like be touchscreen controls and so like I'll touch it and it's like it would make perfect sense and then it doesn't do anything like um like billiards for example billiards which first of all billiards the fact that it has like the silhouettes and it shows you like where the ball is going to go totally takes all the challenge out of the game but with billiards all there are are buttons which is fine but I would have also really, I thought it would have been like natural to include motion or touch controls. Like, yeah, you line it up with your joystick and then you can actually adjust like the power of how you hit using like a motion control or same thing with like touch control, right? You can, you can actually move where you want your stick to be and then actually adjust power by using touch. It just seems like that's kind of a no brainer. I feel like if they had implemented as many control methods as possible for each game, maybe not necessarily all of them would have been used but i think the accessibility is really really important on the topic of things that are excluded um there's lots of really weird limitations on multiplayer that i'm not really understanding at least for local multiplayer i don't understand why there's a two-player limitation on bowling and darts the, that just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense i know a lot of other people have talked about that and it's baffling i mean i get it for certain card games card games you you kind of need to have your own separate screen you can't you can't let other people see what's in your hand otherwise it ruins the entire part of the game i get that but games that require you to take turns that don't really have any sort of secret element i feel like you should be able to have more people to play locally but that's missing for some reason the other thing that's not really a problem, but I guess it's kind of weird, is the game puts a really large emphasis on these guides. Whenever you win a certain amount of games, they'll say, oh, a so-and-so guide has come to visit. And then you go look at the globe, and these guides are basically like playlists of games. But other than the fact that they really just kind of compile a list of four or five games that you can access from the, from the menu of games... It, it doesn't really make sense. They don't really give you any sort of extra information about the games. They don't offer any sort of variety or different ways of playing. It's just like a weird sort of like quick access playlist sort of thing. But the game keeps pushing them out like 
there's some big thing that you really want to unlock, but they're largely pointless. They really don't serve any sort of real purpose, especially when you could easily, for your own personal character, you can make like what you want your quick access games to be and then set that as your guide. So having the other guides, I mean, it's cool. Like you have certain ones that say like, oh, these are the ones from Nintendo's history or different things like that. It, it's kind of cool, but it, it really doesn't add anything to the overall game. From here on out, the remainder of my problems with Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics aren't necessarily anything that has to do with the game itself. It's more about my own personal problems with modern gaming as a whole that I think uh, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics is kind of a victim of in some ways. So the original game that I, I talked about in my first video, it had a lots of great unlockables in different modes. Um, one of my favorite things about the original is the fact that when you win a certain amount of games, you unlock different visual designs for each game, which served as a really great incentive to replay every game multiple times. It gave you a reason to not only play the games you liked, but also other games so you could actually unlock all those different visual styles. Because I loved seeing what they looked like every single different game. Even if it was a game that I wasn't interested in, like when I saw on the unlockable list, like, oh, you can unlock like the hand-drawn option for this game. I was like, I want to see what that looks like. So it encouraged me to play different games that I probably would have ignored, which is something that I've been kind of feeling with this new game. It's like, yeah, I'll probably try all of them eventually, but like for the immediate future, I haven't felt any sort of urge to really try the new games because there isn't really anything that you gain from it. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is not a problem that it's as, as exclusive to Clubhouse games on Switch. Unlockables are really kind of something that's just largely disappearing from games in general. You know, nowadays it's everything is DLC, everything is patched in, you know, extra content are, are just things that they're either all available from the beginning or you have to pay more to get them or you have to wait to get them. It's there's no real sense of urgency to explore or unlock anything anymore. And that's a problem that's not exclusive to Clubhouse games. That's something with games in general, but Clubhouse games definitely has that same sort of problem. It, it removes the urgency to actually try all the different games out. Everything is unlocked from the beginning, which is fine. I think that works better to have all the games accessible from the very beginning, but there's no real reason to actually try out games. That's another problem with the fact that there's a lack of modes like in the original. In the original, you had a mission mode or you had stamp mode, which got you to try different games and remix the game's rules to make things more interesting. It had challenges, things that shook up just the base gameplay. There's a couple of different challenge modes, like there's like different pin challenges for bowling or different things like that for very specific games, but largely for the most part, the game that you have is the game that you get. There are some minor rule changes, but largely the game stays the same from play session to play session. And the thing is, a lot of these problems are things that could easily be patched out. Extra games could always be patched in, more control methods could always be patched in. The ability to add up to four people onto a game of bowling, that is something that could easily be patched in. The problem is, is that ND Cube has a history of not touching games once they have launched. This is something that they did with Super Mario Party as well. That game was highly anemic on content. It had four boards, a bunch of other multiplayer options, but the main meat and potatoes of the games, the boards were really, really short and had very little variety. And a lot of people just expected that there would be more content down the road. That expectation was unprecedented. There was no reason why anyone should expect it, but on paper, it was a good idea and seemed like a no brainer that there would be more boards coming. And yet ND Cube never touched the game at this point at all since the game has been released. And in a weird way, that's something I can respect. We live in a time where games are just released unfinished, right? Games come out and there's day one patches, there's updates, there's add-in DLC, there's all new content. It would seem that, at least from ND Cube's perspective, every game that they release is completely done perfect on launch, which is something I can respect. When I buy a game, especially a physical game, I expect, or not really expect anymore, but I want the game to be the full complete package. I would like to think that, you know, 20 years from now, if I were to dig my Switch out of the closet or whatever, and I pop in a game, that I don't have to download a bajillion updates, which Lord knows if the servers will even still be up to send those updates. 
I want the game to be largely complete and content complete 20 years from now as it would be today. So I can respect releasing a game that is complete and 100% finished, but I can only respect that if the product itself actually feels complete. Problem is, is with this game and with a lot of other ND Cubes games, they don't feel complete. It feels like they have odd choices made. Things are missing. It feels content light. And because of that, it makes you want them to patch the game. But chances are they likely won't. Historically, it's something that they have not really done. And so it seems really unlikely that Clubhouse games will get a patch. On the whole, the game is still a good game. I know I've just listed out a whole list of grievances that I have with the game. It's still a good game. It achieves exactly what it sets out to do. It is a compilation of board and card games, and it is great. It is a great game for just laying in bed and chilling out and just playing some simple games, either online or just on your own. It, it is a fun game. I am glad that it exists, but on the whole, I still see it has massive flaws to it. And when you hold it up in comparison to the original, it just doesn't feel like it holds a candle. It almost doesn't feel like it, it deserves the same name in a way. Because when I think of Clubhouse games, I think of the original. I think of the mood. I think of the atmosphere and the unlockables and how much fun it was. This game is still fun, but it lacks a lot of that charm. And the funniest thing about the whole thing to me is, is that this game only costs $40, which is great. It's a, it's a, it's a good bargain. And honestly, if you had told me that the game was going to cost $60, if I had never known who was going to develop it and you had told me that the game was going to be $60 full price, um, but it was a true clubhouse game sequel, like what you came to expect from the original, you could expect in the sequel, I would have gladly paid $60 for it. People, when the game was first announced, um, I was talking about it to, to Goo Man, and he told me, he was like, how much do you think that game will cost? And I said, I don't care. Like, I will pay full price for that game. But the fact that it's $40, I'm almost relieved that it's cheaper because Nintendo has always made these really odd choices about when they release games. Like the Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze fiasco where they charged like $10 more for the game than when it was released on the Wii U. Or Sushi Strikers, right? That game was massively overpriced. Same for 1-2 Switch. Those are all games that, for whatever reason, they just decided to charge more for. And it, with their track record, you would think that this game would be full price or even $50 or something like that. But the fact that it's $40 is is a good bargain. And I, I honestly, if it's something that you're interested in, I recommend picking it up. It's just for me personally, it doesn't scratch that same itch that the original had. But that's just that's just my opinion. So those are just some of my thoughts about Clubhouse Games if you want more by classics. I honestly didn't intend for the video to go this long. I just wanted to get down my thoughts about the game and then um, I guess I had a lot more to say about it than I thought I did. If you like this sort of unscripted format video, you'd like to see more of these sort of uh, stream of consciousness, uh, let me know in the comments down below. But that's gonna be it for me. I hope you all stay safe and I'll see you next time.